Hey friends, welcome back to my shop. Today I'm going to give you the official 2019 shop tour. It was just over two years ago when I actually uh, tore down the walls to the studs, insulated the whole building, added new wiring to the building, and put in new lights. One of the most important improvements that I made was actually adding LED lights to the ceiling. This building's actually 80 years old and the walls are roughly 8 to 9 inches thick. That leaves my workspace or my workshop space to be roughly 18 by 22 feet. The main entrance to my shop is here on the eastern wall and it actually goes into a stairwell. The stairwell goes up to the uh, second floor which we use as a recreational space. This is the door that I primarily use when I enter the shop. That way I don't have to open the, uh, the two garage doors very often. The north wall is where the two garage doors are. I generally keep them closed unless I'm bringing in uh, material for a new project. The workflow with my shop generally is to bring in the materials, either rough sign boards or, or uh, sheet goods or whatever through this door on the northwestern wall. And then I have my table saw set up here where I can rip things down into uh, smaller portions and make things more usable. I use my uh, timber frame saw horses oftentimes for um, laying out rough sawn stock and that allows me to uh, have a place to put it when I bring it in and then I can uh, rip it down with a hand saw or the miter saw. I've even used my timber frame saw horses as a, a step ladder in some cases. I built these saw horses actually before I started restoring the shop. Um, these are built out of uh, mostly uh, four by six material, um, some five by six and they're all mortise and tenon together and uh, doweled together um, and have no glue um, or nails or screws in them. The saw horses were originally very heavy because I built them out of green timbers but now they're actually quite light. The saw horses are actually built with two different designs, one having a horizontal member and the one in the rear having two wind braces. I built these really for two reasons. One, I wanted something really sturdy for um, stacking lumber on or working different materials, but I also wanted to practice with the joinery in the case that I decide to build some timber frame structures in the future. I'm currently using a 120 volt DeWalt miter saw. This is a great sliding miter saw that is run off of two 60 volt batteries or it can be corded as well. The benefit of this saw is that I can actually take it out into the yard or take it into the house or the basement or other places around where I don't actually have any power and I can still use it and it lasts, uh, the battery power lasts for a long time. I've used this saw for, you know, four, four to six hours during the day without running the batteries down in the past. And I've had this saw now for about a year and a half. The northwestern corner also serves as where I put my firewood. It's the closest to my firewood pile outside so I'll just open the uh, garage door and bring in firewood every few days. The next saw that I use uh, in the workflow to break down uh, materials is my table saw and I'm uh, using the DeWalt 60 volt max uh, table saw and um, it also is battery powered and I can also roll that out into the yard as well and use that for various projects. It's it would be really nice to have a big cabinet saw, but honestly, with the limited space that I have, I think this serves uh, the purpose that I need for now. Hopefully one day if I um, ever have the opportunity to have a larger shop, then I would definitely like to get a, a cabinet saw or a professional uh, table saw. One thing that can make your table saw much more enjoyable to use and much safer to use is to have some sort of an outfeed table. I built this 4x8 bench when I first restored the shop to use not only as an outfeed table but also an assembly table. And this has been a really nice addition to the shop. Both my miter saw and my table saw are connected to dust collection and this uh, uh, hose here uh, connects to some 4 inch sewer line and that goes to my dust collector in my closet. 
My assembly table also serves as a nice place for some storage. When I built this table, I put lots of uh, shelves underneath and that allows me to uh, store different items. Like for example, I use these DeWalt organizers for screws and nails and um, various things that I'm trying to keep off the floor. I even have my chainsaw stored here. In a small shop, you have to get a little bit creative and what I did was I put my planer between the two garage doors. That way I don't limit the, uh, the garage door space if I want to walk through those doors or bring material through. But I can run the uh, material that I'm planing from one side to the next and it doesn't take up the garage door space. My planer is also connected to dust collection and it's connected using a four inch hose. My planer is the DeWalt DW735 and it's a 13 inch thickness planer. I've been really happy with this planer. It does just about anything I would want it to do. One part of the shop that's been really nice is having the French cleat system I have here. I use it for storing all sorts of different items including clamps and various liquids and hammers and clamps and um, that really gets everything off the floor and off of my benches that way um, I have more space to work. I made a video of me making the clamp holder here and also a tour of the French cleat system and I'll put a link to that above. I would like to show you this jig here. I don't think I've ever shown it on the channel and this is actually an adjustable jig for making the juice groove on cutting boards. I usually make cutting boards during Christmas time and maybe this coming year I'll show you how to make a juice groove using this jig. One thing I need to add to the shop is the place to keep some of my uh, materials that I'm not using such as cough cuts of wood. Right now I just have them stacked over on the side of the shop here. Um, hopefully one day I'll have room to build a uh, organizer. I also keep my kindling here as well. We're now in the southwest corner of the shop and this is my wood stove. The wood stove is my primary means for heating the shop in the winter time and then I also have this Air King fan that I use to cool the shop with in the summertime. I installed this uh, stove uh, during the process of restoring the shop. And I used a through the wall kit and then went up the side of the building in the rear. The walls in this building are nine inches roughly thick so I had to fabricate a through the wall uh, kit to go through to go through the walls. The south wall holds most of my chisels and screwdrivers and um, also my lathe tools and then I have this shelving here for glue and various items. I also built this custom rack for saws and my brace and bits. This workbench was actually the first that I built for the shop and it's a um, workbench that is actually attached to the wall and um, it's uh, three foot in width and two inches in thickness and it's made of laminated two by eights. I use the left corner of the wall mounted bench for my sharpening area. I have sort of a workflow here for sharpening my chisels and plain irons and I actually made a video of that and I'll put a link to that above. My primary chisel set is the Stanley Sweetheart chisels and they're the 750 series and I've been really happy with these chisels. They're not terribly high priced and they seem to hold a really sharp edge. One of my newer additions to the shop are these Narex gouges and I purchased these new off Amazon recently when I was building the treadle lathe. I needed something to do some grooving with and these have been really nice. I haven't used all of them yet. I've used probably four of them and sharpened them and uh, I've been really happy with those. Here is my lathe chisels and actually I received these as a gift for Christmas. These are Benjamin's Best uh, lathe chisels and um, I haven't used them a whole lot yet as I just got the lathe done. However, um, so far I've been really impressed with them. Uh, they're easy to sharpen and they seem to hold a really sharp edge. In the southeastern corner I have my drill press. This is just a central machinery five-speed uh, bench drill press that I bought from a friend for a really cheap price. I've got it screwed down to my workbench. I've got this dust uh, manifold here that allows me to control my dust collection to all three tools. I have a dust collector here that I can use for drilling and I have a dust collector here, a hose that goes to my bandsaw. This bandsaw was actually given to me 
by a friend from church. Currently using the Craftsman bandsaw sander. It's a 12 inch uh, bandsaw. Um, it has uh, been a really nice addition to the shop. The dust manifold is easy to use. All you do is just pull out the valve and that opens up that dust chute. Underneath the staircase that goes to the upstairs is a, a small closet and that's where I keep my air compressor and my dust collector. I'm currently using a 115 volt dust collector by Jet. Now we're back over on the eastern wall of the shop and this is my router station. I built this router uh, table probably eight years ago now and um, just, out of, just out of pine from uh, the big box store. It's got dust collection from below and it's also got dust collection from the router fence. One nice thing about the router table is I have all my router bits right there so I don't lose them and they're easy to access. I've had my skill router for probably just as long, maybe even 10 years, and I haven't seen any reason so far to upgrade. On the eastern wall, I have some additional French cleat cabinets for my um, drills and impact drivers. Also have my sanders and sanding disc, and then I have my DeWalt Flexvolt batteries. I've also got a sander here, orbital sander that connects the dust collection. I use the French cleats to store lumber that I'm not currently using as well. Also bring it in to dry before I use it and stack it here. The center of my shop is the place that I spend the most time and this is my Paul Sellers workbench. I made a series of videos on this build and uh, I'll be sure to put a link um, above for that. Of all places in the shop, this is the place that I work the most. I keep my most frequently used tools in the tool well on the bench. I've got a Stanley number seven that I restored. I've got a Stanley number four that is my primarily smoothing plane. Um, I've got a Stanley number five that I use, a Stanley number four that I use. Um, my favorite mallets are the wood is good mallets and I use these every single day. If I had to pick one tool that is my favorite it's the bar inch and a half timber framing chisel. If you watched any of my videos you'll know that I use this in every single project. This chisel holds a edge like none other and um, I believe this chisel is hand forged in Idaho and I use this chisel every day that I'm in the shop. It also came with a really nice leather sheath. My primary vise is a modern Wilton and um, I use this vise every single day that I use my workbench. The final thing I want to show you in the shop is the new treadle lathe. I've been working on this lathe now for going on seven months and um, it's built out of solid oak that I laminated together and there is some cherry on it as well. I use cherry around the outer portions of the flywheel and I made the wedges out of cherry. I made a whole series of videos on building the treadle lathe and I'll definitely link above to that. This was probably the most undertaking project that I've ever done but probably the thing I'm most proud of as well. The lathe has a fully adjustable tool rest and it also can be expanded to turn stock up to 28 inches. I purposely position the treadle lathe in the center of the shop that way it'll be easy for me to film around it for the channel. The lathe was built almost completely with mortise and tenon joinery. I use wedges and dowels to hold the joints together. I even label the frame like you would do in a timber frame structure. I may even connect some dust collection to the lathe as well. I have some of these uh, four inch uh, sewer lines coming down to a pole here in the center of the shop and I could easily run a hose over to the lathe to collect some of the finer dust. One of the smartest things I did was put my Long Ranger 3, my uh, remote for my dust collector here on this pole. That way I don't lose it. I was constantly going around trying to find it um, and finally I just attached it to the pole and now I know exactly where it is. I designed the shop, I wanted it to be multifunctional, not just for woodworking. So I did run some 
air compressor lines across the shop to here and then I have this uh, um, hose organizer where I can actually pull the hose out into any aspect of the shop where I can uh, use the air compressor. Guys, this is my shop. I've always enjoyed looking at other people's shop on YouTube and I thought that today would be a fun time to share with you mine as well. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.